time for the most electrifying kaiju bio ever. Today we'll be surging through the entire history of one of the most iconic ultra kaiju of all, covering the good, the bad, and the undeniably ugly. We have a ton of fascinating, supercharged material to cover that will shock you, so let's plug in to the world of Eliking. <laughs> The history of Eliking is one of the biggest and most exciting topics I've tackled yet on this channel. So without wasting another moment, let's jump right into the behind the scenes origins of this monster. The so-called Space Kaiju debuted in Episode 3 of Ultra 7, The Secret of the Lake, on October 15, 1967, which was apparently the first episode of the series to be filmed. It was written by a man I recently introduced my students to in my History of Pigmon video, Tetsuo Kinjo the head writer of both Ultraman and Ultra 7. It's reasonable to assume Kinjo created Eliking, but Tsuburaya's screenwriters didn't play a big role in developing the monsters in those days, so the bulk of the credit probably goes to a group of staff members that named Eliking and whoever drew this concept art of the kaiju. Notice anything weird about this design, by the way, compared to the final product? That's right, the color! Eliking was originally designed as a black and white kaiju, the backstory of how he ended up yellow is actually hilarious. The suit was painted black and white, as planned, but upon coming into contact with water for the lake scenes, the white areas of the suit were stained pale yellow, resulting in the distinct coloration we all now recognize. Did this incident stain Ella King's reputation? Certainly not. The kaiju actually ended up winning a Best Monster Award for the Ultra 7 series, alongside Alien Metron, and has remained a popular kaiju to this day. Yellow coloration, roar ripped straight from Kamakaris, and all. Let's see what Eliking was up to in his debut. An alien pit, disguised as an earthling girl, released a tadpole-sized larva Eliking into Lake Azuma, which was later enlarged and awakened by a fellow alien pit, as part of their plan to subdue Earth. Dan, aka Ultra 7, was in the area when Eliking emerged from the lake, but he couldn't transform since the alien pits had stolen his Ultra Eye. Dan called on Miklas to try and hold the electric monster off, but Eliking eventually got the best of Dan's capsule monster by whacking him with his long tail and then constricting Miklas with it and zapping him with electricity. The Ultra Guard then arrived to combat Eliking, which bought Dan the time he needed to retrieve his Ultra Eye and transform into Ultra 7. Eliking managed to constrict and zap Ultra 7 just like he'd done to Miklas, but 7 was able to break free, destroy Eliking's rotating horns, which were picking up radio waves from the alien pits, and then finish the job with the eye slugger, ending the monster's brief attack. The kaiju didn't reappear in Ultra 7, except briefly as stock footage in the semi-final episode. But we're only just getting started with this history lesson. Eliking next showed up in Ultra Fight, an incredibly low-budget production released a few years after Ultra 7, which ended up keeping the Ultra series alive despite the poor quality of the five-minute episodes. You could tell there was a lack of funding for the show just by comparing the quality of Eliking's suit to his original Ultra 7 appearance. The monster appeared in about 34 episodes of Ultra Fight, often battling Ultra 7, Wu, and Alien Icarus, and occasionally teaming up with the latter two. In one episode he fought Alien Godala in a wrestling match, while in another he watched waves with Alien Icarus before proceeding to battle him. There's thankfully no way we could get to all of Eliking's appearances in this show, so let's move on to a much higher quality production, like... Red Man! A legendary show that aired in 1972, known for its extremely well put together kaiju suits and- Whoa. What is that? Yeah, Red Man was basically another ultra fight, once again featuring human-sized Ultraman kaiju fighting a hero in short, low quality battles. Eliking appeared eight times throughout the series and succumbed to Red Man's strength in each instance. In this show, several different suits appear to have been used to portray the monster, none of which were very high quality. Eliking had certainly reached a low point of his career after his promising rookie debut. But after these less than impressive spin-off series performances, Eliking managed to fight his way back into the official Ultraman series and things began to improve for the monster. Well, sort of. Not really at first. Episodes 27 through 30 of Ultraman Taro, for some reason, featured several returning kaiju from previous Ultraman shows. Six total kaiju made reappearances over this four-episode span, and Eliking was the second of these, appearing in the 28th episode looking like this. Eliking, what happened to you? 
Perhaps we can forgive Subarai Productions for butchering Elking's appearance in this series, considering their lack of funding at the time, and the fact that the kaiju wasn't even originally going to appear in this episode. It would have been a different monster named Gokiba, who would revive several previously defeated monsters, not including Elking, but this story was scrapped, in favor of the one I'll go over with you in a minute. Elaking's Taro design, usually called Re-Elaking, apparently incorporated an element of Gokiba's design, the teeth. This kaiju is stated to be the Ultra 7 version, revived, but hardly anything about this monster was like the original. It used flame attacks instead of electric ones, was awakened by a full moon and emerged from the ground instead of a lake, had non-rotating horns, had a different roar, identical to that of Takong, and retreated when the sun came up, whereas the first Elaking fought Ultra 7 during the day. Did I mention that they look nothing alike? But I guess dying and then getting revived by moonlight doesn't exactly work wonders for the body, does it? Let's see what Re-Elaking was up to. After being roused by the full moon, Elaking attacked a village causing significant destruction and danced around as Zat tried to fight back. But when the sun rose, the kaiju lost all its energy and retreated. Aware it would probably return with the next full moon, Zat searched for the kaiju. Several children discovered a cave where Elaking was hiding, but instead of informing Zat, decided to try to carve a false tooth out of one of the sleeping Elaking's horns. When the full moon rose again, Elaking emerged once more, and the kids, now ashamed of how they'd behaved, decided to fight the monster themselves. They lassoed one of Elaking's horns and tied the monster to a tree, but after uprooting the tree, the furious kaiju chased the kids away and continued burning up the countryside, as well as doing somersaults? Ultraman Taro arrived to put an end to the monster's antics. Taro transformed the rope attached to Elaking's horn into a chain and used it to yank both of the monster's horns off, which killed the monster. Now we'll touch very briefly on Ultraman's story. In this film, stock footage of Elaking's battles with Miklas and Taro were shown. Elaking was also a component of the super combined monster Grand King in the movie. But again, not really a very impressive showing from the electric kaiju. However, everything would change on March 21st, 1994, with the release of the first Heisei Ultra 7 TV special, Operation Solar Energy. Elaking was the star kaiju in this continuation of the Ultra 7 series, and was given a brand new, well-made suit befitting of Ultra 7's most popular foe. The suit was apparently reused from a commercial for an Ultra 7 video game for the Super Famicom, and looked incredible, especially when compared with the last several suits. In Heisei Ultra 7, a new pair of alien pits arrived on Earth, with another Elaking, armed with both electricity and carbon dioxide-based attacks. The alien pits deleted data the Ultra Guard had on the original Elaking, and then unleashed their new and improved kaiju. Captain Furuhashi, however, remembered the original Elaking's weakness, and the Ultra Guard destroyed one of Elaking's horns, forcing the pits to call back their monster. The Seijin quickly had their monster repaired, but unfortunately for them, Ultra 7 arrived to fight the monster, having awakened from a coma. Elaking began to overpower 7, but the kaiju was drained of his energy by the Ultra Guard using the Hyper Solar System, and Ultra 7 finished him off once again using his Eye Slugger and a Miriam Beam. And that was the end of Heisei Ultra 7's Elaking. Our next Elaking appeared in two episodes of Ultra Super Fight, a comedic parody of Ultra Fight. In episode 2, Elaking tried to present flowers to a female Astromons, but this angered a Bim Star, who destroyed Elaking's gift. The two male kaiju started fighting, but Ace arrived and beat the monsters up and fell in love with the Astromons himself. But in episode 4, Bim Star and Elaking got their revenge and hired an alien Godala to kill Astromons. Ace was able to defeat all three of the evil kaiju, including Elaking, but was <laughs> devastated at the death of Astromons. Don't cry, Ace! Oh dear, let's move on before I get emotional. Next up is the Ultraman Max series. Elaking was the first returning kaiju to appear in the show, and he was given a brand new design for the occasion. Or should I say, a brand old design. That's right, in Max we finally got to see Elaking as he'd originally been intended to look. In addition to being the only black and white version of the kaiju, this is also the only version of Elaking so far with claws. In Max, Elaking appeared in the middle of Tokyo and caused a blackout because of his consumption of electricity. It shrunk down to a tiny size and hid when Dash flew into the area, before laying an egg. The next time Elaking appeared, Dash launched a scanner to determine where it went every time it seemingly disappeared. They learned it was controlling a lonely woman to take care of it when it wasn't hunting for electricity. Ultraman Max appeared and defeated the monster after knocking off one of its horns, freeing the woman from Elaking's control but the egg was shown to have hatched. 
In episode 27, a dead larva Eliking was found, and the signal it was emitting was analyzed, revealing that even more Elikings were in the area. It was discovered that these young Elikings were feeding off of human brainwaves, and had been bioengineered by... guess who? That's right, another pair of alien pits. As a large Eliking attacked the city, Kaido had to rescue Mizuki from one of the larva versions. After struggling with and defeating the little one, Kaido recovered his max spark from the alien pits, destroyed their ship, and then returned to finish off the last remaining Eliking. For Ultraman Mabius, Tsuburai Productions decided to make the already popular Eliking even more lovable, and introduced Lim Eliking, a tiny, adorable little monster with cute stubby arms that appeared in three episodes. Here is some concept art of the kaiju. A small prop that eventually worked its way into a restaurant owned by the actor who played Dan Moroboshi was usually used to portray the monster, in addition to CGI. Normal Eliking didn't appear in person in the series, but the monster's data was used along with that of Naranga and Elidortis to upgrade Miklis to Eliki Miklis. But let's see what the cute Lim Eliking was up to in Mabius. When the particle accelerator that made the maquette monsters, like Miklis, malfunctioned, Lim Elikings started appearing in the base of guys, based on Eliking data the maquette Miklis rejected, since he'd been defeated by Eliking long ago. Even after the accelerator was fixed, Lim Elikings kept appearing for one minute intervals from time to time, so guys decided to make the adorable squeaky monster their mascot. He was named Lim Eliking from the word limited, since he's a limited size, I guess. Man, we've been at this for a long time, and we still have a ton more Eliking appearances to cover. I'm going to really pick up the pace and speed run the rest of Eliking's history, right up to the modern day. Let's bolt! In Ultra Galaxy Mega Monster Battle, an Eliking was captured and tamed by Rey, and became part of his monster team, becoming the first ever heroic Eliking. Apparently, this role was going to have been given to Gubila, before Tsuburaya Productions gave the role to the Electric Kaiju. He won several battles alongside Rey, but in never-ending Odyssey, the kaiju met his match against a tyrant and was sadly killed. In Mega Monster Battle Ultra Galaxy Legends the movie, Eliking was a member of the 100 Monster Army and was defeated by his nemesis, Ultra 7. Eliking then appeared in another comedic production featuring human-sized kaiju, Ultra Zone, and showed up briefly as a spark doll in Ginga, and finally got to fight the Ultra in New Ultraman Retsuden, and then again in Episode 2 of Ultraman Ginga S this time against Victory as well. When Victory defeated the monster, he came into possession of the Eliking Spark Doll, allowing him to turn his right arm into an Eliking tail, beginning in the next episode. Hikaru used the Spark Doll to summon Eliking to battle Five King in episode 8, but the kaiju's electricity just charged his foe up, allowing Five King to destroy him. There was going to be a Cyber Eliking suit, just as there was a Cyber Gamora suit, who would assist Ultraman X in his series, but instead he only appeared as an immaterial cyber monster in the final show. In universe, he was created using data from an Eliking spark doll, and his cyber card was used to arm Ultraman X with the Eliking armor, and later the hybrid armor. Eliking's spark doll was also temporarily absorbed by Grisa. The Eliking cyber card was also used in Ultraman X the movie. In episode 6 of Ultraman Orb, a different kind of Eliking card was utilized by Juggler. Ultraman Jeed featured an Eliking that was actually chasing down an alien pit that had betrayed her people by siding with Earth. Ultraman Jeed destroyed the monster, but the energy of Eliking was trapped in a capsule and later used to unleash Thunder Killer, a monster created by combining Eliking and Ace Killer. Thunder Killer appeared both in Ultraman Jeed and Ultraman Zet, and notably looked a lot more like the Ultraman Max version of Eliking, despite being combined from a yellow Eliking. In episode 15 of Ultraman Taiga, a limb Eliking had been caged and was being cruelly experimented with, but was set free along with several other tiny kaiju. Next, normal Eliking appeared in yet another parody of Ultra Fight, Sevenger Fight, in two episodes. In episode 3, Sevenger defeated an Eliking unleashed by an imprisoned alien pit, or rather the Eliking defeated itself. In episode 7, Eliking was battling a Gazort until Sevenger arrived and defeated both monsters after trying to break up the fight. And Eliking's most recent appearance as of the publishing of this class was in Ultraman Decker. In episode 5, a friendly Eliking named Ellie, belonging to a peaceful alien pit, rampaged after consuming too much electricity. With help from Miklis, Eliking's constant rival, Decker was able to pacify the monster by returning it to its larva form. 
In the Decker universe, the stages of growth for the kaiju were shown to be larva eliking, limb eliking, adult-sized eliking, and full-grown eliking. I actually did it! I got through eliking's full history! I feel as though I were zapped. Hang in there, Professor. There's still a few topics left to discuss. Eliking has made various cameo appearances in non-Ultraman works, as well as in many Ultraman video games, such as Kaiju Busters, Mega Monster Rush Ultra Frontier, he was in the animated episodes based off of this video game too, Ultraman Fighting Evolution Rebirth, and recently Ultra Kaiju Monster Rancher. The Kaiju even has a video game exclusive form, EX Eliking. And of course he's been featured in manga, etc. as well. Basically, he almost always shows up in media featuring famous Ultraman Kaiju. Now let's touch on merchandise. We could probably devote an entire class just to Eliking merch. There's just too much. There's many Ultra Monster series figures, an Ultra Monster 500 figure, a Sound Battler figure, cards, finger puppets, X Plus Eliking, X Plus Re Eliking, plushes, Ultra Eggs, inflatables, magnets, erasers, you name it. Here is some of the Eliking merchandise I myself have collected. And with that, students, we have completed the history of Eliking. Could someone get me some water? I feel fried. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, stay tuned for future videos, and watch some of my other classes, such as the History of Pigmon, or my Shellshock bio. Wait, why is there a swimming pool in my classroom? You asked for water, and I got you water! Uh, uh, now, Pencil Leopard, you know I meant- Geronimo! <laughs> oh, man. Not cool, kids. <laughs> Not cool. <laughs>